Welcome to Milton Keynes. It is my favourite city to drive through in the UK because there's something called the national speed limit on quite a lot of the roads. It's home to my beloved MK Dons and perhaps most importantly for this video, Smart UK, who have very kindly lent me this new Smart Hashtag One for the day. This isn't my first time with the car. I saw it at the UK press day back in 2022, but it is the first time that I'm going to be able to drive it on the road in the UK. The one they've lent me is a Pro Plus specification, which is the entry level version at launch. So it comes with typical entry level features like 19 inch alloy wheels, LED lights front and rear with two very important light bars, keyless entry with pop out door handles, frameless windows, a panoramic glass sunroof, adaptive radar cruise control, 360 degree cameras, lots and lots and lots of stuff. We'll get into that later on. Throughout this video, I'm gonna try and avoid mentioning the 4.2 and the 4.4 every other sentence because this is smart, this is new smart, but not as you know it. This is the start of the rebirth of the brand, the repositioning of it. I'll tell you what, I've been itching to get my hands on it in this country. So I would say if you wanna find out more about the rest of the range from Mercedes-Benz and Smart, make sure that you are subscribed to our channel, but I quite fancy going for a drive, so let's go. It's quite easy to get in and out of, you know. There's no starter button either. The pressure sensor on the driver's seat, well, obviously detects when you're sitting on it and when you're ready to go. Simply pop the car and drive and you're away. First things first, I'm finding it quite easy to get accustomed to driving this car. Visibility is really good. The view that you have of the world around you is helped by big door mirrors, big glass surfaces. The windscreen, it is quite upright and although the bonnet is quite short you get a good view of it and the peaks for where the headlights are make it quite easy to keep in the right spot on the road. It's reminding me so far of a mixture of an EQB and a Mini. I would say that is a good thing. I have a feeling I'll come back to talking about that more a little bit later on but in terms of getting comfortable with it, you know, driving is easy. Now, I always tend to favour twin motor EVs, not just for the additional performance, the additional power torque, all of that sort of stuff, but because the energy recovery tends to be better, in my experience, on a car with a motor on each axle. That said though, the regen is blended really well, so the brake pedal, it feels consistent right from top to bottom. You get a bit of feedback from it, but it doesn't ever feel like the car is entering into a debate with itself about whether to use the motor, the friction brakes, or a combination of the two to slow you down. That is very high praise from me for a rear wheel drive electric car. It's also quite neatly integrated into the standard fit active cruise control. So the car has 12 radar and lidar sensors plus all of the cameras to give it a good idea of what is going on in the world around it and it lets you automatically recover energy. So when it detects a car or a van in front of you it will adjust your speed accordingly to maintain a safe distance to whatever it is ahead of you and of course put some energy back in the battery for later use. Cruise control is activated and altered with the buttons on the left-hand spoke of the steering wheel. I don't know whether that's going to change for right-hand drive, but the central button that will set your speed, the plus and minus buttons increase and decrease, and the directional buttons to the left of it, that adjusts the following distance for when you've got it on. There's a button to resume and then one at the bottom to cancel your cruise control or of course just touch the brake and it will deactivate. I am though instinctively going for the paddles that aren't here behind the steering wheel. I would love to see them just so that you can quickly change between regen modes depending on you know what the road ahead of you is doing. And I would love for there to be a gliding mode as well actually. I think energy recovery 
paddles they're going to become standard on absolutely everything as the years go on just like every automatic car with an engine pretty much now has shift paddles behind the steering wheel it's just a matter of time but i would love to see it sooner rather than later on this focusing on what we have here though Rear wheel drive versions have a 272 horsepower and 343 newton meter torque output, which can return a zero to 62 mile an hour sprint in just 6.7 seconds, the same as a Puma ST. Overtaking performance is, well, it's strong, it's easy, but I've been really impressed actually with how progressive the motor is and how easy it is to drive smoothly. If you need a bit more schnell from your hashtag one, you'll be pleased to know that Smart and Brabus have teamed up once again. The Hashtag One Brabus gets another motor at the front for all wheel drive and pumps out 428 horsepower and 543 Newton meters of torque. Zero to 62 is done in 3.9 seconds and I cannot wait to have a go in one of these in the UK. And for the benefit of you, dear viewer, cause the sun is coming down right on my face. There's a nice toggle switch up here to close the rather large sun blind. The toggle switch on its own, that is very, that's very mini in how it is designed and positioned. I like it. All in all, as a, well, car, car to drive, car to use, the mechanical aspects of it, steering feel, braking, ride, power, performance, air conditioning, effectiveness when my GoPro overheats. I'm really impressed. I'm really, really impressed. It's been easy to get up to speed with the car and it feels like I've been driving it for quite a while. It's a brand new car that has a great sense of familiarity about it. If you've driven a Mini, EQA, EQB, pretty much most Mercedes-Benz products from the last five years, actually, then you'll be able to hop into this and get up to speed and feel quite at home quite quickly I think. When it comes to charging you have a few options of course. Right now we're plugged in at the Ionity DC rapid charging network. The car can take a maximum DC input of 150 kilowatts and return a 10 to 80 percent charge in about half an hour. Of course there is AC charging available. Pro Plus models can do this at a maximum of 7 kilowatts premium launch edition and Brabus versions get 22 kilowatt onboard charging. So this can charge from flat to full at seven kilowatts in just under nine hours for the 22 kilowatt charger equipped versions. Then the job is done in around three hours. What's coming when the car launches is something similar to Mercedes Me Charge or some of the charge cards that you get for the public charging network. So this will be provided by Digital Charging Solutions and you'll get a contactless card that just makes using the public charging network that little bit easier plus one monthly invoice for all of the electricity that you use. Whilst we're here, let's talk about what we've got. Now, the car has been turning a few heads. It's been getting a little bit of attention today, and I would say the good sort of attention. There are some looks of curiosity. I'm a fan of the color combination. I love the black roof. It makes it look, actually, because of this little segment of glass down here. You get that visible disconnect between the main body and the roof, so it looks like the halo roof is floating on top of the car. I've spent quite a few hours now poking around the Hashtag One and I'm not bored of looking at it yet. There are some really nice details in there. So in the fritz of the glass, there are little pictograms of smarts. Make sure that you have a look at them. There's very nice detailing on the rear lights as well. Hexagonal shapes, which are similar to the shapes that you get in the grill of a facelift uh, Smart 4.2 and Smart 4.4. Four, actually. It's just filled with really nice details. Naturally I'm a big fan of the pop-out door handles and the frameless windows. I just think that's always a nice feature to have really but of course where you're going to be spending most of your time looking at parts of this car is inside so why don't we have a look in the interior. It's a nice piece of design inside as well. When I got into the car for the first time I thought great lots of what 
we saw in the concept car has actually translated onto the road going version. I absolutely love it when that happens. Key highlight for me is the trim that goes from side to side on the dash and how that nicely comes out and merges into the central armrest. Now this is quite high up, but that means that ergonomically I think it's, well, it's, it's pretty much spot on for me. There are plenty of places to store plenty of things. So at the top, there is two USB-C charging ports as well as a 12 volt charger and you can get a wireless charging mat on premium models and above. Slightly further back, there are two cup holders which have plenty of room to store my on-brand smart water bottle that they very nicely gave me in Portugal. Further back, there is a huge, rather deep storage area which is air conditioned and it's actually got a card holder for your charging card. Down here, there is this open area for storage which looks very EQS uh, to my eye but having that little bit of open space there, it makes the cabin feel a little bit more open. So it feels quite, I don't wanna say snug, I don't wanna say tight. It feels like the car is kind of wrapping itself around you, but it doesn't feel claustrophobic in here. The seats that I'm sitting on, they are a good mixture of soft, squidgy, but also comfortable and supportive. I've been in this chair for about two hours now today, maybe a little bit longer and my back so far is having no complaints. But let's not kid ourselves, any new car's interior, it is really all about the tech nowadays, isn't it? So the screen layouts and setup, that remains the same on all models. So there is a nine inch horizontal driver's display in front of me. And in the center console, there is this 12 and a bit inch tablet style screen. Of course, there is touch input naturally for it. Now it's running a brand new operating system developed specifically for Smart. It's not quite finished yet. So it is, <laughs> it's trying to take me home and uh, someone set home as Lisbon. So the fastest route is 21 hours and 20 minutes. Don't think I'm gonna be able to do that today. So yes, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is coming, but I would say it is well worth actually having a poke around and seeing what you can do with this infotainment. There's a good mixture of digital touch points and physical controls for things. So the buttons for cruise control, volume, the trip meter, they're all actual physical buttons rather than capacitive touch sensors. I'm a fan of that. What is gonna take a bit of getting used to though is to adjust the door mirrors. You have to go into the vehicle settings into quick controls and then you use the buttons on the steering wheel to move it. I figured out a few more things about the infotainment as I've gone on today. So at the bottom of the screen, the quick selects for air conditioning, heated seats and uh, vehicle settings, they will always remain there. But if you tap into the climate menu, you'll see a wind turbine representing the, well, the fan, the heating, and depending on your temperature and what the current cabin temperature is, the Fox will either look hot or look cold. And at the moment, it looks like he's absolutely freezing. Up at the top here, on the top left-hand corner, this always remains the same as well, so you constantly have quick selects for going home for the main menu, and then quick select for navigation, music, and the 360-degree camera. Down here, you can see common angles like forwards, reverse, and you can also check out the sides, including some brilliant parking by that Prius over there, and you can check your blind spots too. And just by dragging your finger across the screen, you can get a, well, a really good all-round view of your smart. Finally, and this is proving to be a bit of a controversial feature for whatever reason, the Fox. This is your visual representation for the car's voice assistant system. And I don't think there's anything too bad about that because it puts a face to it. It reminds me of Clippy, the paperclip that was in early versions of Microsoft Office. And if you want to find out what happened to Clippy, then check out Delta Heavy's uh, music video for their track Ghost and you'll find out it is quite eye-opening. 
I've had a go with it throughout the day. You can get it to do you know, the obvious things like changing ambient light, switching on your own heated seat, doing the sunroof blind as well, actually. And I found it to be working quite well. The response to my commands is quite intuitive. You don't have to bark orders to it. It feels pretty natural. But there is a little bit more to it than just the front row. I say, let's take a look in the back of the car now. It is a proper five-seater, I would say. This is me behind my own driving position. I've got enough space. I have plenty of headroom as well. And the rear bench itself has a couple of tricks up its sleeve. So pulling on a handle underneath it, you can move the left seat individually, forwards and backwards. The two that are closer to the camera, they move together. And if your passengers prefer to sit a little bit more upright, then the backrest can be adjusted as well. There are two Isofix mounting points on the outer rear seats. If there's nobody sitting in the central seat, then this turns into an armrest and a double cup holder too. The floor isn't completely flat. There is a slight ridge that runs down the center of the car, down the spine of the battery, but what I notice straight away is the floor doesn't feel like it's too high. I'm not being forced into sitting in a weird position in the back here. Top marks from me. That's enough sitting around. I can see that the car has just finished charging, so let's get back on the road. As for ride and refinement, ooh, Vauxhall Ampera, nice. As for ride and refinement, well, so far so good. It's, it's quite comfortable. It's well set up, it's well sorted. The suspension is soft and squidgy, but it doesn't feel wallowy. The car doesn't feel floppy. I've not found much body lean at all really when cornering. Deals with the bumps quite well and it won't shake your fillings loose when you go through one of the pot crevices that are littering all of our roads. A highlight for me personally is the steering because I found it quite easy to get up to speed with it and to be able to put some trust into how the car was going to turn. It feels quite pointy, it feels quite darty, very agile around town but stable at high speeds. It's possible to set the steering to be either light or heavy. I had it set to heavy for the entirety of my time in it, and I have a feeling it will do rather well on a B road. Overall, I'd say it's it's on par with things like C classes, maybe even E classes for cabin refinement. That's rather good. This is definitely one of the most refined cars in its segment that I've driven so far. To have a look at storage, we went to a well-known flat pack furniture store and bought some things that required no assembly whatsoever. Boot space is 273 litres as standard, although this of course can be built upon by removing the parcel shelf and moving the rear seats forward. They can slide forwards and back by 13 centimetres. The rear seats can fold down too in a 60-40 split and there is some underfloor storage beneath the admittedly quite high boot floor for storing charging cables and a 15 litre front boot that can store smaller items or a well folded charging cable. At this point dear viewer, I've got something to tell you. I've been keeping a bit of a secret from you. This isn't my first time driving the Hashtag One. I went out to Lisbon in late 2022, got my first taste and sample of the car out there and I was very impressed. But it did get me wondering in the time between then and now. I kept on thinking, is it going to be as sorted? Is it going to feel right for UK roads? And I didn't know whether it would or not. But it turns out, after doing 176 miles in this seat today, I had nothing to worry about. And I'd say that's quite a good compliment, actually, for the car and for the team that put this together. Oh, and by the way, this is still a pre-production version, so there are a few kinks to be ironed out between now and when the right-hand drive production versions come, one of which being the positioning of the steering wheel. I'm not going to say whether it's right or wrong currently. I know what that does to the comments. But this is still pre-production. It's really impressive, I think. Really, really, really impressive. Smart, you've done a good job.
The model is on sale now and comes with all of these things that you see on the screen as standard and quite a lot more. I think it has been really well loaded with technology, convenience and safety features as standard. The next model up is the Premium, which adds really handy things like the head-up display, matrix LED headlights and the heat pump, which I think is essential for an EV in the UK. Building on Premium is the Launch Edition. There are only 100 of these coming to the UK and they have a bespoke colour scheme for the exterior and the interior like this. The Brabus is of course on sale with bespoke styling features inside and out and that all-important second motor for more power. Pricing is on screen now. I think the car is punching well above its weight, to be honest, with how it has been priced and specified. If you want to find out more, then take a look in the description. I've put all the links that you need down there. That's my first drive in the UK of the Smart Hashtag One done. And what do I think? Well, this is a total reinvention for the Smart brand. I said earlier on that it is smart, but not as you know it. The forward-thinking nature and characteristics of Smart products of years gone by has evolved. It's changed, it's morphed into something different. This isn't actually, by the way, the first Smart badged SUV to have been developed. That went to the 4 More, which was cancelled very late on um, in the early 2000s. But think about it this way. Porsche needed to do something different and they needed to go into new markets in order to maintain the brand. That's why the Cayenne exists and I think the hashtag one is Smart's Cayenne moment and the start of a very exciting new future for the brand. I think I've learned quite a bit about the car. I hope you have too watching this video as well. And I'm looking forward to finding out more about it, giving the other model versions a go and seeing what they are like to live with, of course. Are there any jobs for the facelift? Yes, I think there always are, but they're only small things. I've been finding it quite hard to fault the mechanicals of this car. And I think for a way to hit the ground running for what is essentially a brand new smart, a brand new product, this has done a really, really good job. The only alterations that I would make, I would love some energy recovery paddles behind the steering wheel. I think that's gonna become standard over the course of the next few years anyway on every single electric car, but I would love to be able to change regen modes on the fly whilst driving the hashtag one. I would put some ridges between the touch points underneath the infotainment system so you know kind of where you're pressing without having to look. You do still have to look uh, to get to the shortcuts and I would put some shorter string on the parcel shelf. So that's been my first drive. I hope you have enjoyed the video. I've certainly enjoyed getting to drive this in the UK for the first time. If you want to find out more about the rest of the range from Mercedes-Benz and past models from Smart then make sure to check out the rest of the videos on our channel and do subscribe to us as well so you don't miss a thing. Let me say a huge thank you to the team at Smart UK for lending me the car to film this video, but also for all of the help, support and insight into the new range of Smart products. I'm really excited to get my hands on the car again later on this year. I've got a lot planned for the new family of Smart products, so make sure to stick around. And I'll see you again in the next one.